Hit that subscribe button and bell icon so you never miss an update from Neela Bakore Tutorials. In this part, we'll take an example of this phylum Echinodermata and these animals are commonly called starfishes and the starfish name is given because of the shape but its scientific name is Asterias. So starfish, it looks like a star and that is why this name. But before drawing the structure and understanding the details, we will write about some basic characteristic feature. They are radially symmetrical and the radial symmetry is pentamerous. Pentamerous radial symmetry. They are marine and benthic animals benthic animals that means they are found on the sea bed. Now when we talk of a starfish the general characteristics which are of echinoderms they are going to be uh, common here also that they are triploblastic they have sea loam and everything is uh, organ systems all very well developed all those things are already present. We are here talking about some basic important and unique things to starfish or echinoderm especially like starfish. The body is flat and when they are on the sea bottom they are like crawling on the sea bottom. So now when the animal is like this there is a lower side there is an upper side. Here we give the names on the basis of presence of mouth or anus. So mouth is on the lo lower side and oral side is the side which has mouth. So lower side is called the oral side and the upper side has the anus and it is known as aboral side. So there are body is it is going to be flat on the uh, seabed. So it has oral side, oral side is lower and it has an opening which is called the mouth. The upper side is called aboral side. So when we look at the animal, it is the upper side and it has two main openings. One is anus and it has medriporite. Now this medriporite, it is the opening of water vascular system. When we draw this opening it will be even clear to us that how this opening is and how this water comes in. Now the outer surface echinoderms they have spiny skin. Now spiny is not the presence of spine it is because of the endoskeleton that they have calcareous plates which bulge out a little bit from the skin and that is why the upper surface looks little spiny. They also have on the upper surface pedicillary. Now pedicillary are structures which are actually coming out of the upper surface and they have two uh, structures or flaps or parts or we can say it is like a forceps. So forceps that means there are two jaw like things and they move so that they can remove the debris or they can remove anything which is entangled on the surface. So this is forcep like with two flaps. So it can be jaw like or forcep has those two parts so it is similar to that and this helps in removal of the debris. Now if we talk of the most important thing that is this water vascular system. For understanding this we will have to draw a section. So you have to imagine as if we are cutting the starfish uh, horizontally so that we see everything from or whatever is inside. Here we are talking of the starfish which has five arms and 
there is a central part which is known as the central disc. So here is the central part and these are the five radiating arms and it appears like star and so the name starfish. If we draw a small tube and here is an opening of this tube. This opening is actually this madriporite. And this madriporite opens into a tube and now this tube will lead into some other tubes. So let us draw this part. From here you would find that there are tubes which are going into each arm. We will call it a radial, radiating or radial tube. And the one which is in the center will be known as the central canal. So this is the central tube that we are talking of. So from medriporite water enters, it goes into the circular tube. So this is the central tube which is there. And from this central tube arise five radiating tubes. So this is a radial canal and this one is the central canal and the opening is the medriporite. Now here we also see a small tube from medriporite to the central uh, canal. It is known as the stone canal. So now water enters from medriporite, goes through this small stone canal and then comes into the central canal and from here it is going to go into each arm. Now each radial canal has paired structures on either side and these are again tubes and each tube leads into a small balloon like structure which is called the tube foot. So these are all the tube feet. So here also in all the canals you would find these kind of tube feet. These tube feet help in locomotion. So what happens is you have to imagine that these structures water comes from here and then when this water is ejected with force from these tube feet that creates a, a motion in the animal and that is why they are able to locomote. It is with the help of a jet or a force with which this water is thrown out through these tube feet. So radial canal and on either side of the radial canal there are tube feet. Two arms between which the medriporite is present. That means we are talking of these two arms. So these two arms are known as bivium. So bivium are two arms between which this medriporite is present and the remaining three arms together they form the trivium. So trivium are the three arms other than the bivium. So this is how this complete water vascular system works. So water comes in through one opening, goes through the central canal, then the radiating and then comes out through tube feet. And we have just shown the water vascular system. Water vascular system is also known as ambulatory system or water vascular system. In case of starfishes, one more feature which is seen is autotomy. They show autotomy. That means they can chop off or cut off a, an arm in self-defense. Now this arm can be cut in two different ways. One is if this arm gets cut like this, then in that case this arm will degenerate and the animal which is now with four arms will regenerate the fifth one. But if the arm gets cut like this, then this four armed animal will regenerate the fifth one anyways, but this cut arm will regenerate the remaining body. 
Now, what is the difference between this arm which has been cut and this arm which has been cut? In the center part, in the disc part, there is a nerve ring. It is seen as if it is overlapping, but we are trying to show two different things. So, this green thing which we have shown here is a nerve ring. So, if the cut arm has a part of the central disc which includes this nerve ring, then the arm can give rise to rest of the animal and this animal will give rise to that missing arm. This is autotomy, but condition is that the cut arm should have a piece of the central disc which contains this nerve ring. In case of earthworm, oh sorry, in case of a starfish, reproduction again is pretty much common uh, like other animals. Fertilization is mostly external and development is indirect and whenever we use the word indirect that means there is a larval stage and the most common type of larva which is seen here is bipinaria larva. The larva is free swimming and it is bilaterally symmetrical. Now economic importance of starfish is that the starfishes are dried and then added into soil as a calcium source because when we say echinoderms and they have spiny skin, this spiny is because of the calcareous plates which are present under the skin. Calcareous means they are made up of calcium salts. So after the, uh, the animal dies, they are dried and then they can be added into the soil as calcium source. And in some parts, they are eaten also. So, they are edible also. So, this is one very important example of Echinodermata. Now, in the next video, we will take up another phylum.